Hello, welcome, Cabbage here. Sorry about that intro, but I figured people were expecting something special, so there you go. <laughs> Uh, but in War of the Visions JP, uh, Whisper just got her EX job awakening, and I thought it would be a good time to do an updated review and build guide for her. And then even if Global doesn't have her EX job awakening yet, uh, still 95% of this video will apply to her and other units that want to be tanky. Like you could take the uh, slash resist ideas and apply them to Grasada or Super Stern and make them very strong against certain units. But first, I wanted to talk about a couple things. Uh, one, Sasayaki is a controversial character in Global, uh, but not at all in JP. It's very strange. Players in JP, they just understand that she's a very kind of specialized character, and then people either build her or they don't, use her or they don't. But this is like a, a characteristic of uh, Global players of any game, uh, but they get very tied up uh, like in their identity. Uh, you know, choosing uh, certain characters. And I hope that like some of the, uh, I don't know about hate, but like lack of belief in Sasayaki, I hope it's not because uh, people are going after me. If you want to take pot shots at me, come after me, leave Sasayaki out of this. <laughs> uh, the second thing I wanted to talk about was uh, kind of PvP versus PvE mindset. Uh, I think a lot of people, uh, especially in Global, uh, they really, really kind of overvalue uh, PvP, undervalue PvE, almost to the point where they don't think that PvE even exists. <laughs> and then characters that are better for PvE, uh, like Whisper here, they really get uh, shunted to the side. But for that reason, kind of Sasayaki has uh, kind of picked up this reputation as like a real like underdog, a real misunderstood character. She's kind of become like the little train that could. And so any stories that I hear from people about successfully using her, I love hearing those. <laughs> uh, but let's talk about her pre-AX jobs first. Uh, she has one flashy roll and then two not so flashy rolls. Uh, the flashy roll is the attack type resistance based tank uh, that takes one damage or no damage. Uh, it's hard to recommend this version of her to people uh, for this reason, since maxing the unit herself is only half the battle. To really unlock her potential, uh, you also have to work on equipment, espers, and vision cards, which is a lot. I'm still working on her in my JP account. Uh, equipment in particular is a giant pain. Uh, you can clear all PvE content with like equipment at plus two, maybe even plus zero, uh, but if you're going for resistance builds, you really kind of have to make the plus five of those, and that includes UR raid equipment. Uh, it's not for the faint of heart. And even if you can make her 100% slash resistant or 100% magic resistant, you still have to be careful about where you take her. Uh, so for this flashy attack resistance build, uh, you have to really like the concept and the character uh, to commit to do this. Uh, but there are two not so flashy roles which expand her versatility and are also much easier and less time intensive to build. Uh, those two roles are the breaker and the dark slash chainer. Uh, she is main job knight, and if you do not have a main job knight, uh, you should seriously consider one, even an MR uh, level rarity or lower. Uh, they're surprisingly rare, and then Sasayaki is still the only uh, UR main job knight. And then the thing about main job knights and not sub job knights is that they have both the AP break and TP break. And these will pretty much never be used in auto battle, but in manual play, uh, either PvP or PvE, uh, they can neuter a unit or boss. Uh, one or two hits can completely empty a gauge, essentially rendering that unit or boss a non-factor. I've heard of people using Sasayaki in a manual PvP, and they'll use like a TP break on a healer and just take away their ability to heal, and then their opponent will rage quit over that. Stories like that uh, warm the cockles of my heart. <laughs> and then with the tower and three-star Esper fights, you can make those such cakewalks, you almost feel bad for the enemies in there. Uh, one thing I should make clear about those knight uh, breaks, uh, they are not drains, uh, they're simply breaks. Uh, but because they are only breaks, uh, they will take away much more uh, than drains. And then uh, there is her status as a uh, dark slash chainer. This might not sound very unique or special, uh, but so much of the game requires dark slash chainers that everyone should want a full team of them. 
Uh, in JP now, the Carbuncle raid calls for Dark Slash. I put up a video about that recently. Uh, and if part of your Dark Slash team uh, is made up of Shadow Links, Gafgarion, Little Leela, or Jiza, I think Whisper is an improvement on any of them. And then furthermore, uh, until the release of Dwayne, uh, Whisper is the tankiest of all of the uh, Dark Slash attackers, and that can come in handy in raids to draw attacks. Uh, that was like Final Fantasy XIV, uh, that raid was a, a good example. And furthermore again, with Super Stern and all his breaks, and uh, Dwayne and all his breaks, and then later Stern, EX, and his breaks, uh, Dark Slash is the most versatile raid party out there by a long shot, uh, making any Dark Slash unit valuable. So yeah, if you haven't tried her out as a breaker in manual play, uh, or if your Dark Slash raid team is not amazing, definitely consider her. Okay, next, let's talk about her EX job, Improvements. I've said all along that she is so good that she doesn't need EX jobs, but as long as she got more HP, uh, that would have been an improvement, and she definitely got that. Um, she gets that from the uh, 20 extra levels, of course, uh, but also this upgradable uh, stat node is HP, which is exactly what we wanted. And uh, for this alone, it's worth taking her to job level 25, uh, rather than stopping at uh, 22, like I do recommend with some characters. Uh, but to talk about uh, upgraded skills, uh, Trinity Break is upgraded. It will have a smaller cost, which is nice, uh, and it will also lower CT of the target, uh, in addition to breaking attack, magic, and agility. It won't lower CT as much as Steel Time. Steel Time is a percentage, and it just cuts it in half. Uh, this Trinity Break will lower it by like 10, 11. But still, that could be the difference. Uh, imagine delaying a boss's action while also doing damage. Uh, you would be extending the time for chaining while also extending the chain itself. So it does have that advantage on uh, Steel Time. And uh, when I do use her in Auto Battle, she will use Trinity Break pretty often since it can deal a lot of damage. Uh, sometimes I even have to turn it off if I want uh, priority uh, for a track spell or something. Uh, Trinity Break, there it is. Okay, AP cost goes down to 28. Medium damage, fine. Okay, next is her Divine Heal, which I never used before. It got the uh, EX job upgrade. <laughs> Uh, but now, in addition to raising her max HP, healing that uh, difference, it now gives Protect, Shell, and Regen. This is insane for her, and I'll take some time to explain why, because it's a big deal. Maybe even a bigger deal than the more HP. But Sasayaki has always been a tank that relied on attack resistances, not on element resistances, not defense spirit, not really on evade. And nowadays, there's more and more resistance breaks, and even resistance penetration. So Sasayaki's niche uh, has gotten a little smaller. Uh, but Protect and Shell is an amazing way to augment her resistances. Because the way it works, it layers over everything. So it will help anyone with any type of attack. Even like the uh, Ninja Ton skills. Furthermore, Protect Shell cannot be broken or penetrated. Uh, they can only be dispelled. And that is still a rare skill. Uh, what Protect and Shell really do is increase the number of attack types Sasayaki can tank at once, uh, but also give her protection to resistance breaks and penetration. I do want to be clear, Protect and Shell alone do not make a tank, and they won't make Sasayaki impervious to everything, uh, but it's only good on her. It helps her versatility, and so makes uh, guild battles and class matches a little more feasible, and helps with her weaknesses too. And so, like, if she only has high slash resist but has protect, she can take projectile attacks a little bit better. And before, while it would take a second support unit, or some kind of special trust master like Agrius's, uh, to get protect or shell, uh, now that capability is self-contained in her. That saves you a unit slot, maybe a trust master slot. Uh, quietly, it's one of the best things about her EX job awakening. And then regen on her, I forgot to mention, but that's not fair. It's like her HP value, point per point, is higher than most other units, so regen is extra good on her. And then her all-new skill at 120 is good. Uh, it's not amazing, like Rob's 120 skill, which just kind of changes the unit. Uh, but you're taking her to 120 for the HP anyway. 
Uh, but this is a 3 range, medium damage attack, uh, breaks defense and spirit beforehand, uh, lasts for 3 turns, that break. And then uh, defense and spirit breaks are rare, much less common than like attack and magic breaks. And many defense spirit breaks are like only for the turn of the action, uh, like Orlando or Vineta's break. And then also a single attack that reduces both at once is also very rare, and makes her a better teammate for more types of attackers. Uh, we shouldn't expect a ton of damage from this attack, but Sasayaki is not an attacker, never was, probably never will be. Uh, but as we shall see with some tests I'll do at the end of the video, she does some surprisingly good damage, actually. Okay, and then there is the question of her faith. Uh, she does have some status effect attacks from her Samurai and, and Spellblade subjobs, and higher faith would improve like her damage from Spellblade. But I like to keep her faith low, uh, 50 if she uses the bells or apron, which I do do sometimes. And also, her new Divine Heal has a chance of failure uh, with faith under 50, so I think as low as anybody wants to get is going to be 50. And then to get decent damage out of her Spellblade skills, you really have to build for it and then attack like light element units. And I just think it's more likely that she's going to take magic damage uh, rather than want to attack light units. And then uh, Faith will not help her Knight Breaks or her Brave Down on either her Chicken Blade or Limit Break. But if you've used her successfully at High Faith, uh, let me know. I'd be interested to hear. Alright, the elephant in the room is Dwayne. <laughs> So before we talk about uh, resistance builds, uh, maybe a quick word on comparing Dwayne to her in their roles as tanks. Uh, in a nutshell, Dwayne is easy to use. Uh, Sasayaki is more a unit for kind of advanced players. Uh, it's like Dwayne is the prefab home, the plug-and-play device. Uh, Sasayaki is the uh, do-it-yourself option. Uh, but that's what you get for paying the extra price for the cost 100 unit. You get an easier to use unit. Lower cost units can also be very powerful, uh, but they can take some work, maybe some finesse, skill, analysis, whatever, uh, to get the most out of the unit. Uh, depends on what your idea of fun is, and my idea of fun is trying to make this kind of tricky character work right. Okay, but next, let's uh, do some uh, resistance builds for her. We'll just be uh, messing around here with a uh, three-party team. I have a lot of stuff in this account, but not everything. Uh, like, I don't have good Pierce resist stuff. And then all the info that I'm uh, going to give from now, uh, that can work for these other two characters, uh, or tanks, or other resistance-based uh, units like uh, Thancred. Like, you can get Warrior of Light to 60% slash resistance easy, and that will be a giant reduction in slash damage. And then the way the game is now, you can build one attack resistance on Sasayaki, uh, up to 100%, or two resistance is very high uh, for like a limited amount of time. We'll talk about that. Uh, but thankfully, the two resistances she can build the most easily are also the two she is most likely to go against, Slash and Magic. Uh, let's talk about Magic first, since when she was released, uh, that was how she was built. The first real Magic tank, before Rain, before Mariaru, before even Fravia in Global, if I remember. Um, and then she is both easy and hard to build up to 100% magic resistance. Uh, she is hard because she can't equip light armor like the smart coat, which you can craft any time. And the majority of other craftable magic resistance equipment is limited time. Uh, there is like the uh, Warrior of Light armor here from the Final Fantasy uh, 1. Uh, there's the Final Fantasy 14 uh, Bale Gauntlet. There is the Final Fantasy X, Tita's Necklace. Those are all limited stuff. Uh, there's also the uh, Soul of Thamasa, uh, but that is a raid UR piece of equipment, so it's a giant effort to try to get it to plus 5. Uh, but of course, you could always uh, fall back on her Trustmaster, which will give her 5 uh, to all 5 types of uh, resistance. But it means you can't equip another Trustmaster on her. In some cases, it might be worth it. And then for Espers for her, if you wanted that 15% magic resistance, there's a lot of options now. Uh, there's Omega, there's I Gion, uh, there's Fenrir, there's uh, Marlboro, which I still have to awaken to uh, three stars. Uh, there's uh, Moogle here, Christmas Moogle. Hopefully everybody got that. Uh, she likes Fenrir in particular for the slash attack up. 
Uh, Eye Gion also has slash attack up, but also magic up, so if you wanted to use your spellblade attacks, that could be good for that. Uh, Omega will give you dark attack up. And then thinking about uh, vision cards for her. Uh, let's see, there are the old standbys. Where are they? There's Fenrir, 20% magic resistance for your party. And then a Tonberry. I think this will give you 10 or 15 for your party. And then in JP, we have the Omega card that will give you 20% magic resistance for your party, uh, dark members only. Uh, global players can use the, uh, the Dwayne card there. And then there's one vision card that gives you personal uh, magic resistance. Uh, that is this Seymour card. Uh, this will give you 15 personal resistance. So you could stack that with Fenrir unlike somebody else. Uh, but talking about why uh, Sasayaki is easy to build for magic resistance, uh, she has uh, 30 to begin with. And then you can equip her um, support ability here to give her another 12. That will get her up to 42. And if you give her the Spellblade subjob, uh, she also gets access to this skill, uh, Magic Resist, AoE self buff. At max, it will raise your magic resistance uh, for three turns by 38%. So with her base magic resistance at 42, and then the 38 from this uh, TP skill, that gets her up to 80. And then on top of that, you can just add Fenrir or Dwayne or Omega, and then you're sitting at 100% for three turns. And you can cast this uh, three times per battle. And so if you were happy with that, you would have all of these other uh, slots available for equipment, espers, you could use whatever esper you like. You could give her a Odin if you wanted some damage from a slash attacks and man eater. Or you can just build her so that she's like, you know, 90%, 100% all the time and just turn off that spellblade skill. You never have to use that. And all magic environments are pretty common, uh, whether it's the current JP PvP meta or the three star esper fight. So a magic resist whisper is uh, definitely worth having. All right, next let's talk about Slash Resistance. This is a pretty easy build, uh, but we'll just do the super basic uh, Slash Resistance build. So here is Iron Plate, plus five. And then here is a Siren. I think that's still a handout, uh, Esper. And then we can give her the MR card, the uh, Snow White Guard. There they are. And then on another character, we can give the MR Vision card, Iron Giant. There we go. Okay, so just with those uh, four things. Now we are looking at 91% Slash Resistance on Sasaki. <laughs> so that's a very easy build. And then, uh, yeah, Slash characters are still some of the most common in the game. But if we were to sub in the uh, Platinum Helmet here, that'll give us 10 instead of 6. And then we sub in the Horn Vision card instead of um, Iron Giant. Now we are up to 100%. And so yeah, this is also a great goal. Uh, easy to get that first step, uh, more challenging to get that second step. But uh, that Horn card is available in uh, Global for uh, exchange, so that could help you out. Uh, one thing about the... Um, Snow White card here, it will lower your HP by 15%. Um, at EX Jobs, yeah, that's still kind of low. That's without a whole bunch of other stuff, but another option here is to use the uh, Leonis card here. That will only give you 10 uh, as a personal ability instead of um, 15. So she'll be at 95, but that's still really good. And then she'll have higher HP from that as well. So that is an option. Okay, next, let's build a projectile. Uh, again, we can use the uh, Snow White card. Okay, I'll add the, uh, the Death Machine Esper. Hopefully everybody got that. Uh, and then we can add the, uh, the Final Fantasy IV shoulder plate here. That's another eight resistance. And then for the uh, Allies vision card, we can give the Mask vision card there. So let's see where we are now. 98%, that's pretty good. 
If they ever release a uh, maybe a UR uh, equipment that gives you 10 uh, projectile resistance that she can equip, that'll get her to 100%. Uh, Pierce can get high as well, uh, but you need the uh, Death Machine uh, Vision card maxed. I do not have that, and then I also don't have the um, I don't have the Leviathan Vision card maxed for an Ally Vision card. I could also use the uh, the JP version of the Dwayne Vision card that will give you 20. Uh, Pierce resistance uh, for dark units, but I'm gonna skip that card for now. And then Strike is tough, there's not a lot of uh, stuff out there for now, but uh, the Phoenix Esper will give you 25%, so that's a good place to start. Okay, finally, let's talk about building two resistances at once. Uh, one is Slash Projectile. Uh, that becomes possible because uh, Odin, he has both Slash and Projectile resistance, 15 each. And then again, we have the uh, Snow White card here that will also give you Slash and Projectile. And then for equipment, you can give her uh, two pieces of armor. Uh, like I have the, uh, the Sword Trustmaster from uh, Shiduma. That will give me eight Slash resistance, so that's something there. And then we can give the, uh, the Horn card here. All right, let's check that. And she's at 88 slash and projectile, so I like to have her over 90%, but 88 is still pretty good. <laughs> so that is a way to uh, get that. But if you think about it, kind of you could build her like for magic plus anything. Because we saw before how easy it is to build her for 100% magic uh, if you rely on the magic resist self buff. So you could build like one resistance up as high as you like, go to 100 build the other one to uh, 62, uh, just equip like some Esper like Fenrir or somebody. And then you would have two resistances up to 100 or close to there. And so she's kind of a full-time magic tank uh, if you give her that one vision card and then you could, you know, add another resistance to her uh, if you like. Okay, finally, let's do some test runs. Uh, first, we'll do the most breakiest, piercingest, Stern. With his EX job he gets the uh, the slash resistance break and then also with the exorcist card he gets uh, defense penetration and slash resistance penetration and we'll take him against a uh, Sasayaki with 100% slash resistance. So Stern with the uh, regular attack will do 488. Uh, that's because he does have the uh, innate slash penetration uh, because of the exorcist vision card. But yeah we can see the 100% resist there. Okay, and then we can see the uh, slash resistance penetration kind of midway there on the right, that uh, black sword icon. And then with Stern, let's use the EX level 120 skill, uh, Calamity Hazard, that will break uh, slash resistance for three turns. Okay, 2300 damage on Sasayaki. That's not anywhere near enough to one-punch her. So yeah, even against very high penetration and uh, with a break, can only take away a little bit over uh, half of her HP. And this is not even a fully built uh, team to really raise uh, Sasaki's stats, so that's pretty good. Okay, but we check her slash resistance down to now 62%. Uh, that's quite a bit different from 100, but... <laughs> Okay, let's try that again, uh, but this time let's use the, um, the Divine Shelter, that's the upgraded Divine Heal on Sasayaki, that will give her Protect. Uh, let's see what that does, layered on top of the 100% uh, Slash Resistance. Okay, regular attack goes down to 365. Let's try the uh, Calamity Hazard again. 1700. Now he can't even two-punch her. <laughs> so let's use that. Almost took away as much damage away from uh, Stern himself. That's pretty funny. And why not? Let's use another heal on Sasayaki. And she indeed has the uh, Slash Resistance down to 62 again. 
Sasayaki gets the regen for about 500. That's about 10% of her life, right? And back to full life, almost, for Sasayaki. <laughs> that's mean. So yeah, that's a good demonstration of uh, what Protect can add. How it can kind of act as sort of like a... Uh, kind of a resistance to all type of attacks. Okay, next, let's look at Sasayaki as an attacker, and we're really going to lay it on. But we got like the Diablos card, the uh, Titan card, the Exorcist card. Give her lots of like uh, attack types, Slayers, and then also uh, Penetration. Uh, but Sasayaki is attack only about a thousand. And then we'll go against an Engelbert with a 92 defense. <laughs> And then 20% uh, slash resistance. So let's see what uh, Sasayaki can do here. <laughs> okay, regular attack, 200. Uh, but let's use the apron. Trust master ability there. That will give her slum slash resistance penetration. Okay, now the regular attack will take away 1300, that's quite an improvement. And then let's look at her various skills. Uh, power Break, pretty good. Uh, the Spinning Attack for Blind. Okay, Spinning Attack for Slow, Hien. And Protect Break. This is her new skill. This will break uh, Defense and Spirit for 4,000 damage. It's pretty good. And then the Trinity Break, which is upgraded to the Quattro Break. Not as much damage, but that will break Attack, Magic, and Agility. And then also lower his CT gauge. We can see the uh, red area there on his CT gauge. Uh, but if we go back, we check, his uh, CT is 71 right now. Uh, but if we were to use that Quattro break on him, take it down to uh, 60, so that's minus 11 on the CT gauge. Not amazing, again, compared to steel uh, time, but uh, could be handy. Uh, but yeah, let's use the, uh, the protect break on him. Uh, let's break his defense, see how much uh, that goes down. Pretty good damage. <laughs> All right, we'll check that. Defense goes down to 72, so that's a uh, reduction of 20. Not amazing compared to some. I've seen like, what is it, 50 uh, defense breaks, but yeah, at range, on an attack, with a spirit break, I think that's pretty good. Okay, next, let's look at Sasaki as a uh, magic tank. Uh, here we have her built for 100%. Uh, uh, magic resistance. Um, I have the uh, the plus 12 uh, support ability, magic resistance there. We've got the uh, Seymour and Ol card, and then the I Gion for the 15% there. And uh, nobody here is really built for uh, magic, but it uh, doesn't matter. It's all going to do one damage, so. <laughs> uh, here we got uh, Sakura. One damage there. And then that's even with the uh, the light and lightning uh, in peril, as we saw, so yeah. Alright, one damage for all of that. Okay, let's go back in. Let's go in with a uh, naked Sasayaki, except uh, there will be the uh, Omega Vision card there, uh, which will give her uh, 20%. And so we look there, we see 62 uh, with the, uh, the magic resistance, uh, but she'll be able to use the uh, Spellblade uh, TP skill, magic resist, to give her 38. That'll take her up to 100. Okay, so we're trying out some attacks on Sasaaki. Uh, this is with the 62% uh, uh, reduction. Yeah, we can see that there. So not a ton of damage, even though there's nothing equipped on uh, Sasaaki. 
Okay, but we'll use the uh, magic resist AoE buff. That should take her up to 100%. Yep, we can see that there. And then spells will now do one on her. Great. Okay, now let's build uh, Sakura for as much damage as we can. And then on Sasaaki, again, her only defense is going to be that uh, Omega Esper for the 20% uh, the magic resistance. And then let's really mix it up. Let's not use the magic resist. Let's use the divine shelter. Let's give her shell instead of the 100% resist. So now she has shell and then 60% magic resistance. Let's see what Sakura can do here. A thousand. That's not very much. <laughs> okay, Ruin Jump. 1600, that's non-elemental. Look at the uh, limit break, 1600, not very much. And that's with the uh, the Dark Slayer as well. Okay, and then on Sakura, let's use Garble's Trustmaster. That will give her a giant magic buff, and then also magic resistance penetration, which we can see on the bottom right there. Okay, but 2,000 there. Ruinja again, 3,000. We're getting closer, but we're still not able to one-punch Sasayaki. <laughs> and let me break. About 3,000, again, with the uh, the Dark Slayer. So yeah, that's interesting. So even if she were to run out of uses of the, uh, the Magic Resist self buff, if she still had the Divine Shelter, she could still avoid being one-punched. So yeah, her options have really been expanded. For Magic Tanking in particular, but yeah, just Protect and Shell for general use will help her survive a lot better in a lot of different situations. But yeah, actually kind of taking her in these kind of uh, real life examples against Stern, uh, against Engelbert, against Sakura, that kind of opened my eyes. I didn't expect her to do so well. So yeah, it'll be very interesting. Uh, I want to, in the next month, uh, take her through Arena, uh, see how she can handle uh, stuff in there. Okay, pretty long video, but uh, thanks for hanging in there with me. We'll see you again. Take care.